So you want to create randomized levels for your game. All right. We're going to start with something simple and pick from a randomized list of layouts as we fall down. Similar to the newest Shovel Knight game, Shovel Knight Dig. To begin with, I have my character in scene with an object that I'm calling Bottom Checker. And if I go to our external layouts, you'll see that they're pre-built layouts with a Bottom Checker object at the bottom. And then if I go to the event sheet, you'll see this event with the condition if the Y position of the player is greater than 200 pixels above the bottom checker object, then we change the scene variable random, and then with that variable, it will be one, two, or three, which will create the external layout at the X and Y position of the bottom checker object, and then delete the bottom checker object that was picked, leaving only the new one from the picked layout. And then to get rid of things above the player, I've put everything inside of a group called all objects, and if those are less than the player's Y position minus 1100, delete those objects. And if I preview the game, you'll see that as I fall, the play space is being generated below me. So I could keep doing that forever. But if I go to the event sheet and change the zoom, you see that the bottom checker object is there until the player gets within range of it, and then the new layout is created, but that object is deleted. And this same setup could be used for an endless runner if you put it on its side and use the X axis instead of the Y. And now before I get to the next method, I wanted to show you this example. It's in engine and the link is down below. It allows you to create randomized dungeons or cave systems for your game. I'm not going to explain how it works in this video, but I've put the link to the example down in the description and you can open it up and learn from it or use it yourself. Next is the Binding of Isaac style of generating levels where you start with the level in the middle and then create rooms and hallways out from that starting room. In the game scene, you'll see that we have checkers for up, down, left, and right. And then we have external layouts for a room with four ways, right, left, top, down, and then four dead ends. And if I open one up, you'll see that those also have markers based on the doors we have available. So the right, left room has a marker for right and left. And if I go to the event sheet, you'll see that we have an event for generating a room to the right. We have one for all directions, but we'll focus on this one for now. It repeats for every instance of right in the scene and picks a random right object. Then it changes a variable of that right object called randomizer and changes it to random in range one to six. And then if the number of rooms is less than eight, it will use that randomizer variable to pick which layout gets created at the position of the right object. So if it's right left, it'll be a hallway. If it's right dead, it'll be a dead end. And if it's four way, it'll create a branching path. But if the number of rooms is eight or above, it will just create a dead end. And then it will pick the left object closest to the right object that was originally picked and delete it. Because when we create a room to the right, it's being created off of a room that was already to the left so we don't need that marker. And then it will delete that original right object and add one to the scene variable number of rooms. And that's just so that we can tell how many rooms there are so it doesn't go on forever. And we have one of these events for each checker object. And the only difference is if we create a right room, then we check for and delete the left object. And same for up, we delete down. And same for down, we delete up because that's the direction the room is being generated in. And then finally, we have these two events. We have all of the rooms and all of the checker objects in groups. So if a room overlaps with another room, the RNG has messed up and we'll change the scene to the current scene to start over. And then same if a checker object is in collision with a room, that means the RNG has messed up again and we'll change the scene to the one that we're currently in to start over. And then finally, in the case that we pick too many dead ends too quickly and we get too small of a map, where we have no more checker objects and the number of rooms is below seven, then we change the scene again back to the scene it's in to start it over again. With this setup, it's technically possible that a level will just never be generated, but it's not very likely. At 60 frames per second, this would be happening so quickly that the player really would never notice it, especially if you put up a loading screen that would hide the gameplay until it's done. Hopefully this video will help you create some levels of your own 
And if you want to learn how to fill those rooms with enemies and other objects, be sure to check out this video. And don't forget to subscribe.